Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're very much looking forward to explaining how IMR's infrastructure and expertise combined with powerful data protection solutions from Dell Technologies can help drive your organizations forward. We're joined by Jeff Abbott from Dell who will explain more about our cloud partnership and by Bill Strain and Paul Jeffrey from IMART who will show you what this means in practice for us and our customers. Like many of you, they are working remotely. So if you lose your connection during the presentation, please don't worry. We're recording it and we'll share the links afterwards. So let's get underway and start with Jeff from Dell. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jane. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Yes. So uh, thanks for the introduction there. Um, my name is Jeff Abbott. I'm a senior pre sales architect uh, within Dell Technologies. Um, and I sit within the EMEA Cloud Service Providers team. And I'm going to give you a, a, a brief overview today of, of the partnership, as Jane's introduced there, a bit around the Dell Technologies Cloud and the value of the partnership as well. So in terms of the, um, the partnership that we've got with IMART, IMART are a long-term cloud service provider of ours and utilize Dell Technologies to address the full transformation needs of, of their customers in a very simple and relevant way. But why partner with Dell Technologies? Well, the simple answer is it's a power of a partnership and the IT departments and, and customers um, are looking for a partner to, to help them drive and transform their organizations to help define strategy, help modify the workforce and look at changing behaviors as well. And Dell Technologies, through our partnership with IMARC, can better maximize the value for customers by providing benefits such as innovative and tested purpose-built solutions and also um, ind industry expertise. And that's all um, fully supported by a full portfolio of products and solutions. Now, IMAR are able to take advantage of the next gen technology because they're, they're proven and they're trusted through in-depth education and certification processes allowing them to be at the cutting edge of the technology wave. Now, a quick example of our partnership in practice. Um, IMAR have, have, have a long and successful history with providing data management services and solutions through their partnership with us. And Dell Technologies continue to power the IMAR backup as a service offering. And our partnership in this space alone has seen IMAR join the, um, the global DPS uh, next generation beta program given them not only the earliest access to the next gen data management solutions, but crucially direct engagement with the Dell EMC engineering and product management teams, providing feature and functionality co collaboration and product roadmap insight. And the latest Power Protect platform, for example, has been in IMARC's data, data center since the middle of um, 2019 as part of that global beta program. So IMARC are streets ahead on, on that front. So not only are IMARC collaborative collaboratively shaping uh, the DPS landscape, they're actually demonstrating thought leadership and technical expertise in DPS through that strong partnership with us to the benefit of the customers. So in terms of moving on slightly, we wanted to give a quick overview of the Dell Technologies Cloud and, and give some concept as to what has driven the strategy and, and how we're delivering against it. So by way of context, all of us on this call as technologists uh, have in one way or another made the cloud mainstream and seen how the cloud changes the way that we all live and work. And as a result, the pressure to constantly innovate has seen the data center sprawl to include not only um, private cloud and public cloud, but the edge as well. And that's all down to our application and infrastructure and lines of business teams all looking at new and different ways to innovate for cloud and stay ahead of the curve. Now today, every organization needs to be a digital one, powered by data and running in a multi-cloud world. Now the reality is that multi-cloud is actually here now and it's a customer priority. And to focus in on that, 93% of our customers when recently surveyed said that they deploy workloads across two or more clouds and manage over five different cloud platforms, all in the chase to differentiate. And various factors lead um, to this cloud proliferation in organizations. Customers may have invested in unique capabilities offered by a public cloud provider. They may have looked at risk mitigation by removing the reliance on a single vendor. And they may have even inherited environments through mergers and acquisitions. And the good old shadow IT might be an issue within their organization as well. And that explosion of, of different ways of doing things often leads to cloud confusion um, and very often a very uh, inconsistent operating model, meaning that agility and innovation is, is virtually impossible. And with that confusion comes IT complexity. Um, 
along with business and operational risk and cost as well. And that's all from having to manage different operating silos, different management and orchestration tools, and complex life cycle management um, systems and, and inconsistent SLAs, which is far from ideal. Now, to follow on from that previous reality check, we can see from this slide there's a number of key trends and workload placements, uh, key trends in workload placement uh, resulting in customers choosing this combination of managed on and off prem clouds or multi cloud deplo uh, deployments as part of their, of their long term strategy. And 67% of customers are supplementing their investments in public hyperscalers with clouds both on and off premises. And these have been specifically designed for best practice, availability, uh, performance with management services to fill a gap in resources and skill sets needed to do it um, by themselves. And additionally, when they're doing this, the economics of building and operating the infrastructure required by their mission and critical workloads just can't be justified by doing it themselves. And furthermore, as we look at workloads being repatriated from public hyperscalers, 50% of those workloads are then being moved from the hyperscalers back into off-prem private clouds. And two out of five private clouds will be managed, uh, will be deployed um, off-prem, and that number is growing by 9% annually. So we can see that there's a customer, um, we see that the, the customer data center preferences um, over time are changing, and they're changing quite rapidly. So the question of public or private cloud has been answered. It's both. And Dell Technologies have looked deeply into these key trends and the reasons for driving the, the cloud explosion or the cloud proliferation and designed a strategy that addresses the broadest range of needs for all our customers with a focus on consistency. So the Dell Technologies cloud strategy is focused on taming the cloud confusion. It's a strategy which provides consistent infrastructure, consistent operations and consistent value uh, added services across all clouds. And we've done this by combining the strategies of um, two global providers. The number one global provider of cloud systems management software and hyperconverged software in VMware on the left hand side there with um, the global, the number one global vendor in cloud infrastructure um, in Dell EMC. And we've done that to create a single cloud strategy called the Dell Technologies um, cloud platform. So one cloud strategy. So what we're delivering to customers is one cloud experience. And with the Dell Tech Cloud, you're going to have a common interface, bi-directional connections between the different environments and a single management console to maintain these environments. And we're doing more than just providing a common environment. With this model, we're improving your private cloud experience, making it more like a public cloud. We're also making your best practices and security and management more portable and bringing those to the public cloud and we're bringing the best of both these environments to the edge as well. So the Delta Algies Cloud, as I've just said, it built on Dell EMC infrastructure, leveraging VMware Cloud Foundation uh, as from VMware, and they can be managed by partners like IMR and connected to other partner clouds to deliver, to deliver consistency and choice for all our customers. And this enables customers to, and organizations to innovate everywhere and propel their business forward. So with Dell, uh, Dell Technologies and IMR, what's the value? So just want to finish up with a few slides in and around that value. So partners such as IMR as a long term platinum partner of ours um, offer a, um, their customer base a range of services and, and, and capabilities. IMR can enhance your on prem environments with fully managed infrastructure where needed. They can extend these environments through hybrid cloud extensions to their own or public data centers providing application related services, high availability, virtual machine backup and restores with workload replication and disaster recovery. They can also expand your environments through additional value added offerings, including compliance, security, including cyber security and cloud strategy development as well. So in short, iMark can take you all the way from uh, what we call plat uh, platform one and legacy mainframe environments all the way through to platform three, which is cloud first, fully mobile deployments and anything in between as well. So again, partners such as IMOC fundamentally um, enhanced the value of Dell Technologies and the Dell Technologies cloud strategy for, for our customers. So how do you as a customer benefit 
Well, with with our CSP competencies, customers can rest assured that work that the work going to be sorry going to be working with um, a trusted service provider in IMR that understand the technology and can help them uh, and unlock you know, the full cloud potential. And through earning these CSP competencies, I might have demonstrated technical excellence around the Dell Technologies portfolio and as a service solutions, ensuring that their customers' environments are proven and reliable and therefore reducing the overall risk profile. And with regards to faster time to value, Credential partners such as IMART follow um, Dell Technologies and VMware guidelines uh, for deploying, managing and supporting all our solutions, which helps customers go into production much more quickly, along with the capability of IMART to meet the economic model um, for your business. So cloud architecture flexibility and performance means any variety of customer use case requirements can be catered for along with rapid elastic scaling as well. So anything across the board, we can meet with, um, with our solutions. So to summarize then, IMR are your transformational catalysts. Um, wrap it up in one sentence, that's what they are. Our collaboration and partnership represents a massive opportunity uh, to leverage multi-cloud and hybrid cloud trends for business benefits and realize your desired business outcomes together we provide the fastest, most economical path to meeting your precise business needs. The partnership can assist customers deliver a cloud operating model anywhere, um, edge, private, public, with workloads and applications landing in the right place, be that on or off-prem, private or public, or even at the edge. And that's all driven and dictated by your actual business requirements. So experience the full cloud agility, deliver capabilities to consistently simplify and streamline your operations, and provide consistent end-to-end -end life cycle management. So Dell Technologies in combination with IMART's offerings, services and expertise will, will result in greater efficiencies, greater savings and greater capabilities you can't afford to miss out on. So that brings me to the, the end of my presentation. I thank you for your time and I'll hand you back over to Jane. Well, thanks very much for those positive words, Jeff. Uh, let's unlock some of the Dell solutions now that IMR offers as a managed service to help you meet the challenge that you face by hearing from our product development director, Bill Strain. Over to you, Bill. Uh, thanks, Jane. Um, what I'd like to do today is just outline how uh, IOMAR and Dell uh, can deliver a, a set of managed services that can basically address uh, protecting uh, any company's key assets and that's basically its data and information. Um, so if, uh, if we, we have a look at this, um, obviously in, in the modern environment, um, data is absolutely key to every business. Most of us, you know, exist in one form or another to basically transform and, and process data or turn data into information. Um, you know, data itself is uh, just basically the, the raw material of information. And, you know, information is basically uh, what, we, what we run on. So examples of data you know um, there are many many examples of data and it varies depending on each individual business but certainly a lot of things we would all have in common are you know customer information billing information um, you know customer contracts supplier contracts source codes product designs um, systems documentation documentation email I mean the, the list is is absolutely endless. And, you know, obviously, if uh, any business was to actually lose any of that, uh, it can be very, very hard to, to recover from. Um, the data itself is, uh, is inherently very complicated. Um, it's often spread across, you know, many systems and many different platforms. Um, these platforms can you know obviously often evolved over time so there's many different operating systems many different technologies and these systems again are um, basically you know spread all over the place some of them will be in head office some of them might be in the cloud others in branch offices and you know some are actually you know running on laptops um 
the actual location and and the, the platform uh, that it's running on um, doesn't necessarily reflect uh, the importance of, of the information. You know, obviously we have all this data. You know, we have um, basically a you know a very complicated environment, but the the whole environment just you know isn't uh, isn't static. It's it's constantly under under threats. Now some of these threats are just you know day to day problems. They're they're not malicious. They may just be accidents, and others are you know they're actual uh, you know you know malicious um, either insiders or you know um, malicious third parties who are actively attempting to either steal or uh, damage the data. All of these threats are basically you know happening or potentially happening all the time regardless of the location, format, platform, etc. So it's it's quite a challenging situation. So um, you know what can what can we do about this? Well what we've certainly got to do is provide the same level of protection regardless of the, the data's location or its format. Again, that's primarily because it's it's uh, just because the data isn't held in central office, it doesn't mean it's not critical to, to the business. So you've got to have a solution that can be applied across a, a wide range of use cases, and you can actually tailor the level of protection that's appropriate to, to that particular type of data. Um, the other challenge is that's okay when, um, you know, you've backed up the data, but you need to now make the data available, you know, precisely when it's needed and where it's needed. And again, the, the current situation is highlighting, you know, some of the limitations with some of the technologies now. So, you know, whereas tape backup was was perfectly fine, you know, arguably, when, um, you know, staff could easily get access, the data could be recovered, et cetera, et cetera. But in the, the current situation, you're starting to see that the actual technology you choose um, makes a big difference to the, the data availability. Um, and it's big, you know, it's more of an issue. Um, another issue is basically identifying and protecting, uh, you know, what's important. The temptation is just to back up everything. But as I've said, um, the data volumes and the growth is making that in some circumstances um, impractical. And the last one is obviously meeting industry regulations and statutory requirements. So again, you've got to put a, a lot more thought into just what information that you actually have, how long do you want to keep it for, um, where are you allowed to keep it, and the other key thing is you need to basically verify that you really do have the information. So that's, that's some of the challenges. Um, now, here's some of the solutions that address these, uh, these basic challenges. We've put it in three categories. To start off with, um, let, let's look at uh, backup as a service. Um, now, what we're looking at here is primarily based on the Dell Data Protection Suite. Um, as you can see, one of the, as it was described earlier on, one of the, the, the key issues that we have is that data is basically spread right across the organizations. You know, key data can be on laptops, it can be on SaaS applications, um, it can be on the hypercloud, it could be on, you know, virtual, you know, digital machines and branch offices. Um, it's, the, you need a solution that can go from one end to another. Um, a lot of the, the data that, uh, you know, that, that's important is also within, you know, embedded in um, applications such as you know Exchange, SQL Server, Oracle, etc. So you need a solution which can go from one end to the other, 
and can basically grow and evolve as um, as your requirements do. You know, so for example, you know, we're seeing you know migration from on-premise solutions out into data centers and out into um, you know the hypercloud. Again, you need a solution that, that can cover uh, all of those bases. And this is something that the data protection suite can do. It's got you know, unparalleled support for applications. Um, with something like Avamar, you can basically uh, easily manage remote offices and laptops, et cetera. And all these solutions can basically be, uh, can run both on the cloud and back up to the cloud. So there's a, you know, you've got um, the, the basically the full spectrum of protection. Disaster recovery, uh, again, um, basically builds on the backup um, protection in that the, the same basic, many of the same mechanisms that are basically backing up the data can also be used for a uh, disaster recovery. Now, in the circumstances where, uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, let's say um, you're perfectly happy to recover a system in 24 hours, then basically a backup solution, which is uh, basically tied into uh, a backend platform that can provide the compute and storage so the systems can be restored to it and brought up and running from yesterday's backup may be acceptable. Um, for a lot of uh, applications, that, that is acceptable. But for some applications, uh, basically, it has to be much more granular than that. And for that type of application, we've got Recover Point. And Recover Point can basically uh, protect data right down to the transaction. So it's almost like a tape recorder. You can decide, you can play it in and play it back. Um, so a combination of the data protection suite with Recover Point can provide you with whatever um, granularity you require. And obviously, um, different applications uh, and you know, different solutions um, you know, require uh, a different technologies. And uh, basically, you know, in terms of uh, disaster recovery as a service, um, the data can either be, you know, recovered to IOMART data centers or, in fact, can be uh, recovered into the hypercloud depending on requirements. Moving on from um, disaster recovery as a service, uh, you've got business continuity, and it's it's a little more focused. It's basically focused on identifying the critical systems, the, the minimum set of systems that are required in order for a business to function, and as basically assuring that in the event of a disaster, these systems can be brought up and also these systems can be guaranteed to be available. So two parts to this. One part is uh, nothing to do with technology. It's about identifying those systems and identifying what is critical and what is the, the minimum uh, set of information that's required. And then as you can see, there's an introduction of um, air gaps and what air gaps basically uh, do is it ensures that you, the data is basically off-site in another um, entirely separate location and probably an entirely separate region. And uh, those off-site replicas can be restored into a, a recovery zone to ensure that the systems are functional and this also allows obviously the testing of of these systems to ensure that if a disaster does occur that that the, you know it's been proved that these the systems can be brought up and will function and either the systems can be run from within the recovery zone and the business run from there or it could be moved back into the production systems when they come up or a production system in another location Uh, develop a further move on from the business continuity is cyber recovery. Again, the actual 
data and information sources remain the same, the air gaps remain the same, but uh, the focus is on an assumption that uh, a malicious third party has basically got access to your systems and, you know, and has compromised it. Typically, the way this would happen is uh, someone may get access to your system. It may be a phishing email, it may be social engineering, um, it could be a Trojan, but basically what they'll do is they will go onto the system and they will sit there, they will learn about how the system works, they will attempt to elevate their permissions till they've got permissions right across the, the entire system. And then at some point when they are happy that they understand how it all works, they will write some scripts and these scripts will A, delete all your backups, delete all your snapshots and start to encrypt your drives. So the idea is all your data and all your information is gone. The only thing you're going to have is an email asking you for bitcoins. And this is the, the solution to that particular problem. The air gap is absolutely key to that. It's one way. So basically what this means is if the credentials on your existing system have been compromised, they cannot compromise the off-site copy. They do not have access to it. They don't have physical access to it and you know they don't have permissions to access it either. So what we've got there is the Cyber Recovery Vault and there's a, a new product there, which is CyberSense. And what CyberSense is doing is as the, basically it's uh, the Cyber Recovery Vault controls the, um, basically the replication process, ensuring that it's basically one way, it's only opened, the connections are only opened, um, you know, when the you know, data has been transferred across, um, it makes sure that only the appropriate ports are open. And CyberSense is looking for any indication of data compromise. So one, it will alert if, for example, it looks like some data has been compromised, data is changing, um, let's say encryptions, you know, some, some drives are starting to get encrypted or just indications of um, compromise in one way or another. It also assists where if, uh, you know, the worst has happened, it allows you to actually identify um, last good versions of the data. And then this data can then be moved to the recovery zone. It can be verified that uh, it's, it, it's correct and functional. And once the systems have been cleaned up, either it can be brought up as effectively part of a, a DR solution in another location, or once the systems have been cleaned up, it can be moved uh, back onto the production systems and, and off we go. Um, so that, that's the focus of the, the cyber recovery solution. Um, so basically, um, you know, Dell and Iomar um, using the, the primarily using the data protection suite can provide a, a set of fully managed solutions that can address all of the, the key use cases that we're likely to encounter today and not just address it, but the actual managed solution can grow uh, with the data volumes and also grow um, as the basically the organization requirements evolve. Um, so thank you very much for listening and uh, back to you, Jane. Thanks very much, Bill. So you can see it's a pretty complex picture out there. And that's why we partner with Dell Technologies to help make life simple for you. Now, let's turn to IMART's Technical Services Director, Paul Jeffrey. Uh, Paul's going to sum up how we can help your business. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, Jean. What is the IMART advantage is a question that, that every client and prospective client will, will ask of us. IMART uh, is a well-respected and well-established business. We are uh, publicly listed on the AIM uh, market with a market capitalization currently of around £400 million, revenues of upwards of £100 million per annum, over 350 staff, 
and um, services that range from small single VPS style customers um, all the way up to complex multi-site, multi-location, multi-region hosting services. We own our own data centers. These were decisions taken by our, our executive and our CEO specifically fairly early in our managed hosting career. Uh, we have a dedicated fiber and network which connects all of our UK data centers and a global footprint um, through our partnerships uh, with Equinix. Um, what does that all mean in, in practice? In practice, that means for our customers that we can support a wide range of solutions and services ranging from uh, 3.4 million bus journeys for some of our transport customers, all the way down to the management of uh, affordable homes and, and their uh, maintenance and, and, and ongoing support uh, for some of our housing association clients and almost everything in between. I uh, is happy to have some of the largest um, uh, businesses in the world as their customers in one way, shape or form, providing services where they need to have the degree of stability and security that only a, a service provider with our type of pedigree can provide. Um, what services do we provide? And, and it's a critical part to realize that IMR is a, a very much a soup to nuts vendor, which means that uh, we can uh, help you on, the, on your journey through the cloud and through managed hosting from the very inception of, of an idea and all the way through to the ongoing support and service of your, uh, your solution uh, in, a, in a business as usual structure. Um, it's very important to understand that we do that all with our own resources. We don't uh, outsource anything in any way, shape or form. Uh, whether that be a cloud journey that you're taking your first steps on, IMR can provide within the group, uh, consultancy services with um, highly accredited uh, cloud consultants who can come, listen to you, take uh, your, your ideas and turn them into valid plans and, and plans which you can take forward uh, into your own business. Similarly, we can architect solutions based on, you know, the, 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 I hesitate to call it the back of a fag packet design, but on something which can be just an embryonic idea within your business. We can work with you together to build that and turn it into, into the platform and solution that you need going forward. There are multiple elements for building solutions of this type, be it consultancy, be it design. But when a solution is put forward and put together to suit your business needs, we'll consider all elements of it from hardware, software, operating systems, applications. We'll look at resilience and, and how you cope with um, uh, the, uh, you know, how your platform will cope under uh, negative scenarios where, you know, of, of failure, be it a failure of individual components up to failure of sites. Uh, and, and areas of, of, of service. We can uh, architect solutions to take uh, benefit of and leverage the, the large scale environments that we have within, within the UK and, and worldwide. And similarly, we can expand your solutions out into the hypercloud solutions, be they AWS or uh, more commonly these days Azure. Um, and again, this is all in a single managed strap provided by IMART staff and IMART employees. Services that we are comfortable with and that we will work with you on, on providing uh, the back-end solutions for are, are um, a view, available for you to view on screen currently. But the key thing to remember is that we provide the support and service you need for any of the applications that you're likely to be using. Um, it can be a simple co-location requirement where you have a, a, a piece of hardware or a kit or a piece of kit that you can no longer justify hosting in your internal data center, um, all the way up to your first steps on the hypercloud journey with um, your, your, your test and use of test and dev in Azure. Um, we also look at the resilience of your environments and your planning for, for resilience and things like business continuity, disaster recovery, backup, replication of workloads. And these workloads can be anything from a standard single VM all the way up to looking at backing up Office 365 content, uh, as well as everything in between. To do that, however, we need to have the right infrastructure. And that infrastructure is as much about physical locations, physical networks, as it is about people and products. We are um, uh, fortunate to be one of the most highly accredited um, vendors uh, out there at this point in time, or um, providers out there at this point in time. And we have leveraged our relationships with companies like Dell EMC to, and VMware to provide um, the solutions that our business uh, customers require. They provide the level of 
features, um, security, uh, resilience that, that we need to be able to deliver a solution um, uh, to you. There's a small list of our key vendors shown at the bottom of this slide. Uh, and without a shadow of a doubt, we are, are fortunate to be able to work very closely with all of these. Accreditation is more and more critical these days, and it's no longer a tick box exercise in, uh, a, um, in, in a tender. We uh, are, again, one of the most highly accredited hosting businesses in the UK. Uh, there's a list uh, down at the bottom of the right-hand corner and, uh, and the, the bar at the bottom showing you some of our accreditations uh, and some of the processes and procedures that we follow. However, in our particular case, this is an absolutely critical part of our service delivery model. We, uh, the three core areas of the slide you see, service assurance, business assurance, and community assurance, show our commitments to you as a customer and to also matching uh, the types of requirements and commitments our customers are making to their customers, uh, to their staff and employees, as well as their shareholders and investors. Um, and we follow these principles to ensure primarily that you have the comfort in dealing with IMART as a provider that you need. Um, cloud first is a, a, a very interesting uh, view and, and really to these days cloud first is uh, an approach taken by many businesses for many different reasons. One of the primary reasons of course is that there is a perception effectively that using hyper cloud or cloud first solutions makes the benefits and, and takes the benefit of economies of scale provided by large scale service providers such as IMR. You know, you no longer have to maintain internal data centers and internal data rooms. Moving into a hosting environment means you get the benefits and economies of scale of a company, be they in terms of hosting, cooling, the basics of co-location, all the way up to the managed service wrapper where uh, you are outsourcing, if you like, some of your day-to-day -day workload to, to a third party to look after the running of, of the, the infrastructure side and leaving you to worry about your, uh, your applications and serving your customers. Um, it's been well uh, demonstrated that companies that make the, the, the leap into cloud, be it through managed service provision or hyper cloud, become more efficient. They spend more time on improvement and development of their solutions and services when they are abstracted from the kind of nuts and bolts layer. Um, we're also seeing that um, you know companies that make that decision to go cloud first are likely to be more transformative. They're likely to be looking at IT not purely as a cost, but as being one of the areas in which their business can improve and, and fundamentally develop the services and solutions that their clients and end users can use. And then fundamentally, we're seeing that a cloud first transition can make it easier for you to find customers when you have the peace of mind to know that your service application layer and solution is, is resilient, is supported and managed the way you need it. It allows your businesses to focus much, much more, more closely on the acquisition of new customers. Complexity is often the challenge that we have. Businesses develop their IT over the years in a very um, uh, osmotic way or, or almost, a, in, one would say, a way that can be so chaotic. You have competing departments in the past that would look for IT and IT requirements and projects and differing uh, and needs. And, and often you would see that you'd have two or three departments within businesses running competing applications. And the number of applications and application architecture that you do see within the modern day business uh, can be quite daunting. And it makes it uh, one of the, the reasons why businesses don't want to approach a, a, you know, a cloud transformation. Understanding the way that these applications and solutions all in, are interdependent of each other uh, is often one of the challenges as well. And we see things like legacy uh, applications not being retired uh, or not ever having been considered for retirement, which is one of the areas where cloud transformation uh, can often be seen as not even possible. Um, that's not something that we think is true. Uh, IMART's speciality is obviously in looking at these types of issues and, and, and aiding you in understanding how to transform all of the things that you would previously have considered to be blockers in your cloud adoption um, uh, uh, journey. And then SLAs uh, and design sprawl. SLAs are, are internally within most businesses are very uh, difficult to find almost. It's often difficult to actually understand, well, I want to deploy an application within my organization. It's going to be critical to me, but is it critical to the rest of the business? Uh, it's very important that we understand that as, as hosting partners, 
um, how we uh, uh, aid you to understand the, the applications that you use and their criticality to the rest of your business. And then design sprawl is one of the most common issues that you have within any organization and, and IMR are there to ensure that's something that isn't translated on your, uh, into your cloud journey. We are specializing really in helping customers meeting the challenges of the, the modern cloud transformation journey. Um, and as we've said before, we provide these services on a managed basis to support you and in your transformation plans. The network connectivity, security, and the expertise that we have is available to you 24 by 7, uh, and that's 365 days a year. We are here primarily to make your first steps into the cloud joyful ones and not painful. And we are looking at currently on our current customer base, we have global brands uh, consolidating footprint solutions um, and to introduce a degree of homogeneity into their uh, provision of even simple things such as backup and so on. And we have the right partners in Dell EMC and VMware Technologies to ensure that we're providing you uh, the tools you need to develop the applications that support your business. We again are one of the, the most accredited businesses in the UK and proud to be so. And uh, you know we really uh, exist to be a, a trusted partner for all of our clients, uh, large or small. Why IMR then finally is, uh, as I've tried to explain, we can assist you with any phase of, of your uh, requirement, be it in the discovery phase, where you're trying to think about, well, how do we make that first journey? Uh, and all the way through analysis, design, deployment, optimization, and finally into the business as usual support element. The business as usual support doesn't end there as well. We ensure we have a fully uh, featured account management program, which uh, uses technical account managers to analyze your day-to-day -day, uh, platform running and to ensure that we're looking at things like improvements and, uh, and so on throughout uh, the life of you as a customer with IMR. Thank you. And uh, any questions on that section, please do let me know. Thanks very much, Paul, and to Bill and Jeff as well. We've really covered quite a lot there. Uh, we're going to be sharing a recording of this webinar with you in the next few days. So if you do have any follow up questions, uh, let us know then. So thanks very much again for joining us. Do follow us on social media and visit our website to find out more about the services we offer. And if you'd like to receive our regular newsletter, just go to the contact page on our website and fill in your details to join the mailing list. Enjoy the rest of your day.